My name is Nina Dokiva and I work at the numerical computation group at Wolfram Research. I'll talk about global optimization in the Wolfram language. So, so uh, long time ago, optimization problem and algorithms were divided into linear and nonlinear. And the more modern approach is to talk about convex and non-convex optimization because um, uh, convex problems and algorithms have some similar characteristics to uh, linear problems and algorithms and thus they can be solved very robustly and efficiently. So uh, our group worked initially, so when we started to um, re redo the optimization functionality, we worked initially on convex optimization solvers. And um, now that we have almost wrapped this up, we have continued with non-convex solvers. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, the global optimization numerical function and minimize, and then I'll give some internal notes and uh, I'll talk about solvers that can be used that are not yet in the default method, but I find them very, very useful. So um, n minimize has been in Mathematica since version five, but now that we have included so many convex optimization functions, it is picking up a lot of new, a lot of new syntax, all new notations, and algorithms are also being propagated to n minimize. So as you know, historically we the syntax is that we give the objective and constraints in the first argument and then the variable specifications in the second argument. Now, since the new version, it, it will also be possible to give the objective and constraints in two separate arguments so that we are more consistent with the new optimization functions that were coming up in recent years. Okay, and then we can give constraints in so many different forms. For example, this nonlinear constraint can also be given as a convex constraint right here. So this is a norm con constraint that can be represented with this vector inequality. <clears throat> so uh, this, these are all new notations coming from the optimization functionality. Okay, so um, also we can um, represent the constraints with regions. We can talk about the domains, whether the variables are real or integer or vectors or matrices. So there is a whole this flexibility coming in uh, together with the new algorithms in n minimize. So you'll be able to access all of this through just one single function and minimize for global optimization. And here we are plotting the result of this simple minimization. And for most people, that will be the end of the story. But if we want to know what really happens inside, the most important question is what kind of problem this is and what kind of solver it uses. And most importantly, is it convex or not? So let's say we only want to solve this with convex method. If it returns a result, then it was able to use an efficient, robust algorithm. If not, then it will go to a nonlinear algorithm, or in this case, it will just say, I could not solve it with a convex method. Okay, so if we look at the objective, here it is not really convex. So it's convex in X and it's concave in Y, but we were able to use an algorithm for difference of convex that is still very efficient and robust. So in this case, convex may include transformable to convex problems, but still very efficient algorithms. Okay. Um, okay, so, um, Again, the first thing that, that n minimize will do internally is it will try to classify the problem. It will check all the constraints, see if it, they can be, um, if they're convex or they can be converted to convex. 
And if that process is successful, we can use a very efficient convex algorithm. If not, we go to a non-convex method. So um, I'm, I, I know there are just many uh, terms here that need to be defined, but I won't have time for this right now. So I've uploaded some definitions in the notebook on the conference site, if anyone wants to dig in. This so, yeah. Okay, so if I use in minimize, yes. All right, it goes through each one of these types and it's boring. Right. Okay. Because, yeah, I mean, I, I've been using it that way. Okay, and yeah. It works. <laughs> yeah, that is the intention. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Well, it's not supposed to be much. So if you if you are certain that you have a convex problem, then you probably want to go directly to the convex optimization function for this type of problems, but it's not supposed to be a lot of overhead. Okay, so just one quick example with a convex problem, just so I can show that it can efficiently solve a problem with 100,000 variables very fast just because it's a convex problem. And because for convex problems, we know that we know that any local minimum is a global minimum, then if we converge to a solution, we can be reasonably, reasonably confident that it's the correct solution. Okay, so um, I'll talk about the non-convex methods. Uh, oh, let's start with just a quick table for the convex solvers that we have. I already said that we can just say me method goes to convex, or if you want to be certain that you're using a non-convex solver, you can say method goes to accept convex. And we have all these library solvers here that I have talked before. Gurobi Express and Mosex are commercial solvers, so you may need a license from those companies for this, which are often free for academic users and express even have a community license that is in Mathematica. So for small problems, you will be able to use express without any further trouble. And for Gurobi and Mosaic, one would need a license from the companies. Okay, and most of this, so except for the commercial solvers, most of these library solvers are in the default method, they're very efficient. And when, uh, when you want to solve the problem with machine precision, then, uh, then they're automatically picked up. So for non-machine precision, you only, you, there are different algorithms that were done in, in house. And also if you have mach machine precision, but some very specific problem like equality, Equality constraint quadratic, for example. The default method will, this is a very efficient algorithm that we have and it will be used by default. So, okay, so there are a few transformable to convex algorithms that we have. And for non-convex, these are the four, four algorithms that we had since several, since almost version five. So uh, the cheapest one that is not truly really global and often will return just a local minimum is called Nelder meet, but it is very fast. So as N becomes very large, this algorithm will become quite fast. So it is in the default method for that reason, but we'll be reworking the default method now that we are getting more solvers. So then we have two stochastic, stochastic algorithms that are more robust. And one of my favorites is random search because you can just keep giving more search points, initial points from which it will find local minimums and then the global minimum will be the best one from the initial points. So you can give as many search points as you want until you see that you've converged to, that the result is not changing anymore. So a new solver that is coming in this version, it's a library from the Coinor initiative called Coen. And uh, it's for non-convex, non-linear 
it can also solve mixed integer problems. And we are still testing it actively to make sure it's robust. That's why it is still not in the default method, but we'll try to incorporate it once it's fully tested. So the only limitation of this new solver is that uh, it uses expressions. So you cannot give functions that, that are, say, say, a black box function. It will not accept a black box function. It will not accept some very special fun for mathematical functions. So it will work with the most common elementary functions like arithmetic, sine, cosine, uh, log, exp, all of these widely known functions. It will work very well. So, um, okay, let me see how much time I have for examples. Uh, I think I need to go very fast now. So I will just show that the new method Quen works much harder for to find global minimum than the other methods that we have. So in this case, we have a problem that have infinite number of local minimums and eventually most methods will get trapped in one of these local minimums. So all the current methods get trapped pretty fast somewhere here while Quen goes to a point where it, it's, it, this function sine and cosine are really inaccurate with machine precision. So, so it's kind of obvious that, that this is unbounded problem. Okay, so in a, okay. in a 2D example, again, the stu this time the on, only Nelder meet will find the local minimum. You can see here that the global minimum is near, next to minus six, which is what simulated the link and differential evolution find and Quen as well. Uh, now the meet finds a local minimum random search needs a little more points to find the global minimum. And when I use method random search, I like to put also sub method type opt, which was, so the default is still interior point, but I popped is a newer and faster method. So maybe we'll make this change in the default method soon, but for now I like to put it by hand. And uh, when we give some more points, random search will also find the solution. So the good thing about random search is it will work with black box functions and all kinds of mathematical functions when you have a problem that, that Cohen will say, I can do that. Okay, and uh, so let's talk about quickly about mixed integer problems. One, very simple mixed integer problem is to take an n-dimensional ball and find the minimum of the total of the coordinates. Uh, minimize the sum of coordinates. So since I can, could not make a picture of 10-dimensional ball, I would just show that in a two-dimensional ball, these are the two points. There is more than one optimum point. And the default method in this case will take somewhat longer to solve that. While the commercial libraries and method Quen will be much faster here. So Quen will be useful for, for mixed integer problems, usually but not non-linear at least, and non-convex, but, but, but for convex it will work well as well. So, um, So uh, let me see how much time I have. So max good problem. This is a problem with great complexity that is usually not solved from the direct formulation. But now since, since the algorithms are becoming very fast, we can try to solve it from the direct formulation, at least for medium sized graphs. And that works just fine with method Quen now. But for but for graphs that are much larger than that, I would still recommend uh, an algorithm through 
semi definite optimization, which is implemented in, in this graph functions find maximum cut. So that we will use semi definite optimization with one of the semi definite solvers. CSDP is by default. You can try the SDP as well, works very well. Okay, so um, for some very large linear mixed integer problems, the commercial solvers Gorobi and Gorobi works very fast. Express is also doing a very decent job. And um, for geometric optimization problems, I usually like to use MOSIC because uh, it works very well with exponential cons and with norm cons. And in geometric optimization, the problems are converted into conic optimization problems with linear and exponential cons. So in this simple problem, when n is two, we, we get close to 100 exponential cons and the commercial library mosaic does solves this problem fast and robust com compared to the default method. Okay, so uh, we are also testing lots of problems that come from online repository, mixed integer, nonlinear problems, and uh, making sure that when work when it's supposed to. Okay, so uh, how do we implement, uh, how do we put new methods? There is a very simple way that, that is available for everyone to use. We just register the method. We have example here online for Gorobi. We say what kind of problems it can solve, and then we give the solve function. And once we've done all that, we can use Gorobi in any of the optimization functions. Uh, so Gorobi is for um, quadratic and quadratically constrained real value or mixed integer problems. Okay. But what I want to highlight here is that the plugin method can be used for everyone to plug in their own method quite, quite easily. We have documentation for how to do that. Okay, so with this plugin method, we've been able to plug in all these libraries, open source and commercial libraries that are available to use in Mathematica just by writing the name of the method. Okay, so uh, in conclusion, I will say that uh, Wolfram language functions are very to use. They have very flexible syntax now and can be used for modeling language with this plugin method to put many new solvers. Uh, and they do automatically processing classification. We have now many solvers that can be used. And next thing would be just improving the default method of n minimize so that it can uh, uh, work automatically so you don't have to think about which solver to use.